in vivo, which means in real life, 400 milligrams per kilogram of ascorbic acid increased anabolic and proliferative genes. About three weeks back, a viewer commented on the video on muscle farming, myogenesis, allowing for perpetual gains. They said, you should look into vitamin C and cell, uh, stem cell literature. It's a major factor in new stem cells. If you don't know what myogenesis is, hit up Wikipedia for their myogenesis page. That's great. Thank you, Juraj, for that suggestion. But yeah, here's a study on fish, small fish, in vivo and in vitro. So in other words, they proved that the vitamin C, ascorbic acid in this case, actually helped in the process of myogenesis in a petri dish, but also in real life. In conclusion, ascorbic acid directly affected the isolated muscle cells and the higher ascorbic acid supplementation positively influenced muscle growth after fasting. If you go to Google Scholar, you'll find study after study, or at least paper after paper on this sort of thing. Here's another one, enhancement of vitamin C induced myogenesis by inhibition of extracellular signal regulated kinase, ERK, 1 and 2 pathway. Okay, this is interesting because I said myogenesis is a complex process that is regulated by a variety of factors. We have previously shown that vitamin C and a mild endoplasmic reticulum stress synergistically enhance myogenesis. Now, what do they mean, endoplasmic reticulum stress? Well, there would be a stress on a specific area of the cell, but essentially that's irritation at the cell level. That's going to come back in just a moment. Yeah, treatment with ascorbic acid alone had minimal effects on myogenesis in C2, C12 cells. However, combination treatment of vitamin C with U0126 greatly enhanced myogenesis. The number of thick and long myotubes was increased and expression of uh, myo1 and 2 was increased. There seems to be some consensus between studies that there needs to be some kind of irritation or some kind of stress to kick off the myogenic process with vitamin C. Vitamin C seems to have like mid to late stages or early mid stage effects on the myogenic process. It's not in the early stages of myogenesis. And we have stimulation of myogenesis by ascorbic acid and capsation. Now, if you know what capsation is, that's basically like pure pepper spray. The functional interaction between vitamin C and a high dose of capsation, a, potensum, a potential endoplasmic reticulum stress inducer. There it is again. So that's the idea. When I took a high dose of vitamin C through the growth phase of my, my little routine that I do, I didn't see any difference in effect. And this kind of stands to reason. This, the, the results that they're seeing in a Petri dish have to do with the stress on the cells and vitamin C. And also the results that they're seeing in live trials are resulting the same way. There has to be a stressor there to the endoplasmic reticulum. This all got me thinking back to a video I did 10 months ago, vitamin C for sight enhancement. Now how this came about, back in the day, Patrick Arnold floated an idea out there of a different kind of sight enhancement, one that was water-based and used uh, lambda carrageenan. And the idea being is lambda carrageenan is what they inject into beef in the supermarkets and it's uh, hydrophilic. So it actually attracts water and plumps up the beef so it looks good in the display window. He thought, why couldn't that work for humans? And they actually did it in a study on mice or rats in Japan years and years ago. And... He said if you translate that, you can get the idea of the doses that work, and it's not super complicated, it's just a small amount. Nothing crazy high, and kind of the minimum of what you would think. But, anyway, I fooled around with that, and had mixed results. I don't think, you know, it wasn't something I did a lot of, but we're talking 20, uh, 15, 20 years ago, just playing around with some of these ideas. But it came back to me, and I thought, what if we use vitamin C precursors in an electrolyte form that will bring water into the cell plus you know we're getting vitamin c conversion right there in the muscle and i didn't know anything about this myogenesis aspect of vitamin c and stress stimulus but now that i'm going back and thinking about it see i tried it and i just tried it for a little while it's all in my video here and i was mostly doing my outer biceps and you know a little of this uh you know inner longer head of the tricep you know and I, 
it wasn't like a synthol. It was just a simple water base with electrolytes in it. And I thought, look, you know, when people like Dave Palumbo talk about super feeding the muscle, well, this is none of the scar tissue, none of the weird stuff. It's just vitamin C precursor, electrolytes, and water, right? And uh, disinfectant, right? The results that I were get, was getting out of that were not what I expected. I expected to have, you know, just temporary inflammation for maybe two or three hours, similar to what people used to go for with uh, Essaclean. And that wasn't what happened. What happened was, yes, there'd be that just a little initial inflammation, like a little pump right there in the muscle, but it didn't look blurry like a synthol injection or a site injection. It didn't blur the muscle. It was, you could tell that it was just kind of pumped with water. And I thought, hey, success, right? This will go down in six or eight hours and no big deal. And it wasn't a huge, huge thing. It was just, you could tell you had a nice roundness there, a fullness, just bringing that water into the muscle. But the funny thing was, is that days later, you would still be having an effect. And then your muscles like almost over time, you know, you could see the quality improve just a little bit. Now, it's a stretch, but now going back and reading through this, it makes me wonder. We're getting vitamin C, and I got to do more research. I'm basically talking off my head here just because it's kind of exciting to me. But we're getting the vitamin C directly there. I'm sure a lot of it's converting locally. I'm, I, I would guess, got to look into that more. But it's going from precursor and it's absorbing water and all that's happening right there. But also there's this minor stress of that irritant being in the muscle. So are we stressing the uh, endoplasmic reticulum? I, I, would, I would assume so. So maybe we were, maybe I was seeing a little bit of, of a nice little bump of uh, myogenic growth from that and I just didn't know how to put it into words or explain how it was happening. So that's kind of where all this has led me. I can see that me just taking vitamin C in addition to my regular routine is not going to make any difference in the long run with more new muscle or anything like that. But I did see interesting results from that little electrolyte water site enhancement thing I tried and made up a while back. But I kind of dismissed it because I thought, no, you're just, you're crazy. You're seeing something that's not there. It's subjective, you know, yada, yada. But now I'm kind of thinking about it again. Maybe there's something to it. And with my hydrogel that I've come up with for peptide conversion and things like that for a longer half-life, perhaps that mixture would go a long ways to keeping the contact there at the site as it slowly releases and converts to the vitamin C, brings water in, et cetera, et cetera. So something I'm obviously going to revisit and try. It was fairly painless, especially compared to alternatives. Uh, way back in my 20s at some contest for some contest prep, I tried to a synthol protocol on my arms. I gained all of a quarter of an inch for all that pain and nodding and problem and everything else. And it didn't last. So it's not, it was just, it's just oil and solvent and maybe some little minor irritant. It's, ugh. Uh, so that was, like I said, that was 20 years ago. Obviously I don't have synthol arms. I don't have much for arms, but, <clears throat> but that's something I tried and gained a quarter of an inch and then, uh, after the contest, it went away. So <laughs> as you would expect, but this was, this is a little different. It was like the little bits of quality change. It wasn't like a bloat, like a synthol bloat. It was just like, huh, you're getting a little something in there. But anyway, I just thought this was interesting and thought I would share it and just kind of where my thoughts are on this kind of experimentation. There's a lot of other peptides that people have brought up that I look into and I'm still looking through them. GDF 11. I did the video on, uh, PGF 2A. All of that's, that's great stuff, uh, and, you know, we keep learning. It's kind of rare that there's something that's actually practically applicable that will make a noticeable difference. And I would say so far the oxytocin has, I suspect there's other growth factors and stuff out there that would make a noticeable difference. To me, maybe subjectively what I've been talking about here, you know, we'll have to give it another go and kind of see what new I see. PGF-2A, I'm really still not real high on. I'm, I'm not sure that it did a lot of good. IGF-1, LR3, you know how I feel about that, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, 
a lot of why this channel does these kind of videos, why I do these kind of videos, is so that we can kind of sift the wheat from the chaff. If there's something that makes sense and it's actually applicable, safe, you know, and beneficial, then great, you know, and those actually usually get the more views. So, but we got to, we got to go through and kind of find out what's what. So, so far, what I would say about vitamin C and myogenesis is it doesn't hurt. It's always good to be topped off, I, I'm sure, but I don't notice a personal difference from high dose to just normal intake. Uh, on the other hand, at the cellular level, if that stress is being produced at the cellular level, I'm kind of thinking there might be something there and I'm excited about that part. So I'm going to go back, do a hydrogel version of it, give it a run. I'll show you guys, you know, what things look like and what's going on, but it'll just be the vitamin C precursors with uh, in electrolyte form, uh, hydrogel, and that's it. You know, the everything that's in the hydrogel. So anyway, if you've made it this long, you're uh, the exception and thank you. Hit like and subscribe and all that good stuff and... We'll catch you next time, Muscle Farmers.